Let me play this. This is what you said about uh, about women. Here's one of them. Will women have the right to vote tomorrow if you wave that magic Christian wand? No. Um, because if we had a Christian nation tomorrow and women did have the right to vote, we would not have a Christian nation within 50 years. <laughs> okay, ex elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, because the husband has been appointed by God as the head of his home mm. and no fault divorce and women's suffrage more than anything else ultimately split the household. Mm. So we're not talking about women not having a say in society. We're talking about representative government. That's right. Right now there are people in Williamson County, Texas, where I'm a resident, who represent me. No one gets to represent themselves mm. in every single scenario. That's right. We are all represented by somebody else, whether we like it or not. Uh oh. Well, okay. I'm, I had to fix that. So how do how do we how do you? Well, you know what? I want to ask you a question. Can you explain that? Uh, first, it, it just would be helpful for me to um, what uh, what would you object to, Corey? Well. What I would object to is the the one house, one vote. Uh, what happens? In, one, I don't, I don't see that as being biblical. But two, um, let's say if you said that this is what I come through, just a natural conclusion. If we just stretch this out to its natural conclusion, that the man being the head of the house, that his vote counts for her vote. Um, what if she? What if there are adult children in the house? Does his vote count for them? Does it count for the? What about the boy who who's twenty? He's staying at home, uh, and the the daughter who's twenty one. Does it apply to, to them as well? Or what if they are in the household and the, and the father, the grandfather's there, the grandmother's there? Um, it just, it, I don't see it being biblical. I don't, I don't see it making sense. What if the father is incapacitated? What if he is uh, not that, you know, he's got some mental issues or what have you, then how does this work? Why does this work? Why does it even need to be the case? Um, so are you, just to make sure I'm understanding your position, are, are you saying that universal suffrage is an improvement, that that's better? And, and do you mean and, you mean as far as women being able to vote that's an improvement well yeah like universal suffrage everybody you know except for children being able to vote and uh and then also you know biblically um because what i've noticed is you know <laughs> it's funny you know modern evangelicals uh especially baptists you know baptists have a rich tradition of congregationalism and kind of you know the church polity of a lot of baptists is really just um is democracy, you know, spiritualized and adopted by the church, and and so, um, but I I just I, I've yet to really find the biblical argument um, for why universal suffrage is a Christian sacrament. I, but why? But why do we need? Why do we need to say the women can't vote? Or now, and, and I, I don't know if you said it or addressed it, but if the if the children there, that the adult children that are there, is it just one vote per household? I, I, my point is, why? Why is it, is it because of Again, the outcomes that that we see, and so it must be laid at the feet of of women. Well, I, I just I would just again ask um, why why um, why does everybody need to vote? I, I don't. Well, I because don't it, it's a it's a it's a constitutional right. It, it's just the right. It's like saying why why does everyone need to drive? Why does everyone need to? How vote? how is it a con how is it a constitutional right? Well, we have. Here we have when we had the constitution, women couldn't vote. Well, so the I, reason, but the reason why it was determined that they could is because there, there's these two words that come out. The two words are the people. And so what courts have had to do over the course of the last 200 years or so is to address the people. Um, just like the second amendment who are, who, who, who's allowed to have a gun? Well, the, Bi I mean, the Bible, <laughs> the constitution says the people do women constitute the people? If you cannot constitute women as the people, well, then you cannot constitute a baby who was unborn as the people. If you that's can't constitute, so, yeah, so, so that's a great point. So, you, you have to have that. That's a great point. So are children people? And if so, how come uh, we're denying them their humanity by not allowing those who are under 18 to vote? Well, even still, uh, we're talking about adult. Now you can set limits on, on them. Uh, I don't think there's a problem with that would have it with having limits. If we're saying that children get certain things, uh, or not allowed to have certain things, 
I don't think that's a, that's a problem with that. I don't know that, that there's any human being. There are some, but you are allowed to have certain standards that you that you can uphold, but you cannot uh, eternally or um, conditionally forever take away the rights of the people. If the people doesn't mean anything, if the people are specific to which people the Constitution needs to, sp needs to spell it out, if it cannot spell it out, well, then the people has no has no meaning. And so the First Amendment goes away. The Second Amendment goes away. The Fourth and Sixth Amendment go away. The Fourteenth Amendment. Um, I know you want to uh, you know, repeal the Nineteenth Amendment, but then also the rights of the babies who are the people. They go away. And so you've got to just go by the, the word. Now, if you want to have a, a new constitutional conven convention and state that we need to go ahead and and remove the languages, that's fine. But one, you're not going to get the votes um, because yeah, most I, don't, people... I don't think you have to remove the language. I think the language is good. The so people. so so what about the word the people are are women contemplated in the Constitution? Our children contemplated in the Constitution. That's the argument. I think they are. I think the people are. are. So here's my question. Are the are children considered the people? Yes. OK. And the one thing the courts have never done, they've never addressed it. When hopefully that's that's the goal. Hopefully it happened that the courts get an actual case uh, that has standing to go before them to where they have to determine that the babies are the people because there's no there's no. Um, biological metric that they can use to deny that babies are the people. There's no way they can say that babies are not the people. And if babies Amen. are the people, that means those babies, male and female, are the people. We can't say the male babies are only the people and not the female Amen. babies are the people. So if everyone gets the constitutionally uh, mandated protections for the people, then that also naturally extends to women. So you could not, you could not with this constitution, with this country, with this America, you could not uh, eliminate that because you would have to eliminate the first, the second, the fourth, the sixth. The There's just no way you couldn't do it. How, If you're going to leave the people in, well, then how do you do so? How, how do you get past that? We had the First Amendment and we had, you know, we had the First Amendment before we ever had the 19th. We, we had plenty of time on the books in our history where um, we're household votes were through mm -hmm. male headship um, with the first amendment the people um, and yet women couldn't vote and again it's just it's still you still haven't answered the question in terms of children uh, so i'm saying yes children count as we the people and all those provisions and all those rights in terms of you know the protection of the life of children including the unborn child and uh, from the moment of conception the 14th amendment i would apply to uh, the issue of the sanctity of life for the unborn um, all those things can be applied uh, without saying um, to, to deprive a certain individual of a vote is not depriving an individual of of personhood. It's not depriving forever. them of. Yes. Yeah. Forever. We could all like I mean, I, I'm just saying conceptually, if we're talking theoretically, um, uh, you could have a monarch, uh, you know, okay, a, so a monarchy where no one can vote, including men um, and uh, voting. Here's the point. Um, I do not believe you can make a biblical, nor can you make a constitutional argument that voting is a human right. Well, you you would only do so. You would only do so according to or with the Constitution. I mean, we we're talking about our country that is governed by our Constitution, right? And so, because of that, um, our Constitution lays a framework framework of our country. We can limit things, but we can't limit things in perpetuity. In other words, we can't say that this person doesn't have this right for so long. For example, the 19th Amendment uh, only seeks to clarify a redress that people did not see in the Constitution because the courts have stated uh, in agreement with the 19th, the 19th uh, Amendment that they clearly are the people. They're part of the they're, they are part of who is contemplated in the First Amendment, who's contemplated because are we are we saying that only men have freedom of speech? Are we saying that only men have the right to carry a gun? Right. Are uh, we saying that only adults have freedom of speech? Are we saying that children are not we the people, that children are not, they don't attain to personhood until the age of 18? And nope. why 18? Like, you see, I, I'm just saying that you can argue both sides. Nobody's denying the personhood of a child who's 15 years old simply by saying that that child uh, does not yet have the right to vote. As, un, until a child reaches uh, whatever the government determines to be that particular age of consent, and in certain things, it varies from state to state, but you cannot limit that in perpetuity. In other words, we understand that children are fundamentally different um, uh, in their biological makeup, their mental makeup, and so forth, maturity-wise, 
uh, for for a time being, my two year old didn't have the capacity. He couldn't tell you what a president is. Well, not my grandson. He could neither of them or my grandchildren could tell you what a president is or what they do. And so you wouldn't have that. But do we take away that right forever? Sure, we are allowed to, according to the courts, um, we are allowed to restrict certain things. But to take away the right of a person forever takes away that person from being a citizen of this country. So is a woman not allowed to also carry a gun? Is she not allowed to to exercise her free speech? Children are allowed to exercise free free speech to the same degree that we can. They cannot do it in so much as it would uh, interfere with someone else's liberty. A woman voting is literally, is literally, this is why this is one of the arguments and why, why it was granted, is the 19th Amendment necessarily is connected with the First Amendment. You mean to tell me she can't express her right? Because if she can't express that, what else can she express? So if her husband is beating her or what have you, she can't express any, any concern with that. She absolutely has that same right. And unfortunately, um, if men were better men, because my I, I think the bigger issue is not women. I think the bigger issue in the country are, are men. I think we have too many win, men who are, and everyone's insecure, but I think more and more today we have insecure men who cannot either control their own household or control other people. They want to control other folks by forcing them. I'm not saying this is you, but I've seen this over and over again. I've seen people tell me that that guy's a sex offender. He's a child molester. He needs he needs to get killed. We need to do something to him. And my, my statement to him was, well, go ahead and do it. Not that I want the guy to get killed, but the point was, you want me to do your bidding because you can't do it. And I think that's what's happening in a lot of these in a lot of these circles. People want other folks to do their their bidding, not themselves, and they don't have a rational argument. I say this. How about if men were godly men and led women and led their children and led their societies? I think if this house is godly, it's not that it's not a far stretch to see the neighbor's house uh, on either side become more godly and then and the and the um the, the neighborhood become godly and the, the local community and the school and the school districts and the city and the county. I think the problem isn't women. I don't think the problem is the government. I don't think the problem is the framers of the Constitution. I think the problem is men, and I mean males, uh, Andra, males, who don't know how to be godly and show themselves godly in whatever facet it is. I think that's the bigger problem, not women voting, because a woman, if we don't like who she's voting for, Give her better. If you want male candidates, and I, I would want, I want to see better male candidates. Give us better male godly candidates. I think that would, and then that comes back to what God left it to was the churches. If there were better male pastors, and you and I can agree on this, there's some horrible pastors out there, because you've got these 60 percent of people call themselves Christian in this country. If they, if they were led by a godly pastor, and other godly pastors will go and deal with these. So I, this is what I think, Joe. Now you tell me if I'm wrong. I think your focus, yours and 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 the Doug Wilsons of the world and so forth, I think the focus shouldn't be making America godly. I think your focus should be making the pulpits godly, making the churches godly, because you've got 60 something, 300,000 churches in America. and We haven't put a dent on society. That's not but, the government. That's us. 